Is that any better? I hear you. That works. Perfect. Sorry, having audio issues here. Not a problem. Not a problem. And I, I, I saw Maria, I think, tag in and then disappear. So maybe she's coming back. We'll give a minute for her. We have Bob. We have Vincent. This is good times. We have Brian, who did not bring enough beverages to share with everyone. So that's Ooh. will be taken into account. Ooh. It's seven, Jesus. All right, let me see what else we got here. Well, I think, um, Kathy, do you see Maria still trying to get in or have we, um, I think have, we lost, have we lost her? I don't see her. I think um, she is actually, she's um, conflicted out on two Tarbox Lane anyway. So we can perhaps just get started with that. Um, remind me, board members, was somebody else conflicted out on that one? I think Bob was. Yes. All right. So that would be Vin, Frank, and myself. For, um, we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. Let's see what we've got. Bob, you're normally my guy to read these, so I will read this a virtual public hearing will be held on thursday november 18th 2021 oh i don't want to start there i want to start with um tarbucks lane where's the oh sorry i was just going by your agenda yeah by notice so we'll just go and order that here we are I'm pulling up on my screen. My eyes are not that good anymore. <laughs> I get too many things all day. All right. <clears throat> I'd like to read the hearing for Two Tarbucks Lane. It's a virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 18th, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Brian E. Scott, Two Tarbucks Lane, North Reading. MA map 74 parcel 102 for a variance from the rear setback for a third bay to the existing two car garage according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. Do we have uh, bah, 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 a Mr. Brian Scott here? Oh, we do. Yes, he's a, he... Oh, sorry, I was on mute. No worries. Um, Kathy, great. I was going to ask you to put up that plan, and that's even better. Maybe zoom in on it. And Brian, if you would just tell us uh, what you're planning on doing with the space. Um, we currently have a two car garage that's attached to the house, and we're just basically looking <clears throat> to add a third bay. Um, my same situation as a lot of families, two kids, and we get so much stuff. We just we have in two bay we have a two bay garage right now and no room for a car. <laughs> so not one car. We have you know we so we have bikes. We have hockey shooting stuff. We're just looking to add be able to put at least one car in there. We're, we're, we're going to configure it so we have be able to put both of our cars in and still have room for the kids stuff. Sure, and. Let's see, so you, as part of this addition, it looks like there's going to be a, uh, a new deck, small expansion to the kitchen, but it's just the garage that is within the setback. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so we're bumping up the back of the house, like the kitchen area, like two feet, and then um, we're incorporating right now. We have a bulkhead, and that's being incorporated basically into the garage. So we're, we're trying to lose the bulkhead. That's a big part of the project too. Is we, we want to be able to 
you know, I don't know how many people have bulkheads. We don't use it. We've never, you know, we use it once a year, clean the spider webs and stuff. And mm -hmm. so we're trying to make that an entrance into the house and that's going to go into the garage. Um, so, I mean, there's, it's a multi-purpose kind of addition as far as it's going to open up more use to the basement. And it's also obviously going to give us a space in the garage. And is this, is this a one story or two story? One story. Sorry. The house is two story, but the addition is one story. Um, and the the setback. What is the what is the closest that it's going to be to the side and the rear? So that's the the forty two nine yes. and then forty five. So we have a rear of fifty required and a side of twenty five. So it's just the rear setback. Yeah. That you yeah. need portion from. Do you happen to have any schematics to show what this proposed addition would look like? Um, you know, the kind of the side view or back view? Um, um, we have architectural drawings, um, but they're on paper. Um, they're not, it's not something I could share on the computer at this time. I'm happy to forward them to you though. I can scan you can them. Hold it up if you I can hold it up if you want. <laughs> sure. Why don't you, well, we. <laughs> It's through the miracle of Zoom. If you just want to hold up something just so we have a, a general idea of what it looks like, and then we'll ask you to if you send in a, a copy for the files later. Would be okay. Um, I need to go grab it, so excuse me. <laughs> not, not a problem. And while um, Ms. Scott is grabbing those, that's the reason we went with the one story is for looks. We were going to go two story and it just, um, it would have looked great. I and mean, we have a really good architect working on it, but it was just, wasn't, it didn't look as natural as we wanted it to. Mm -hmm. So that's why we went, uh, went with the one story and it's, it's going to blend in very well. Um, our neighbors to the side, of, you know, they're very close to us and they've seen the pictures and stuff. They're, they're excited for it. It's, um, yeah, it looks very nice. It's a project we've been planning for eight years and <laughs> never got around <laughs> to it. And, um, yeah. So, um, Frank and Vin, any, any thoughts, questions on this? Um, where is your septic? In the front. It's in the front. Yeah. So the septic is probably about where where that it, it where it says lot fifty one. It's probably probably where it's where it's the first floor bays you'll see like around there where the, where that's written. So it's really nowhere near. Maybe between there and where it says forty thousand four one seven SV. SF. So we have a lot of another big part, big reason we want to do the garage is we're making the, um, we just don't have a good turnaround up top. Driveways, I don't know, 150 feet up a hill and and uh, if Maria was here, she could attest to the fact that she she drops my daughter off at the bottom of the driveway because she can't turn around and she's afraid of that driveway. So she would try We're going to make a big, a big we do the third bay. We're going to pave all that and just make it a huge. It's just kind of unfeasible right now with uh, safety. Because if you back up and, and you, you know, don't do it correctly, you could go off a cliff. And that's not, uh, Bob's seen it too. Bob knows the house. And it's, um, yeah, the, the, we're trying, you know, it's going to be the three bays, and then we're going to make the garage a lot bigger. We're going to like incorporate a little basketball court, in, you know, put a basketball net and make it a fun area. But it's more to it than it's just a garage. It's going to be a paving and more of a safety thing too, so we can get the cars turned around. And so does it, every day, is but, your yeah. access, is your driveway, um, off of Tarbucks, and then it kind of comes around to the side and goes in on the, or the base. Yeah, so, yeah. so, so if you came off uh, McIntyre, you would take a right onto Tarbox, but you really wouldn't go right. You're pretty much bare right off McIntyre. Mm -hmm. 
it just goes straight up the hill. So if somebody's like at that stop on, on tar box, they, I couldn't even go up my driveway just because of the angle it's at. So I have to kind of get a lot of confused people wondering why I'm standing there waiting for them to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm happy to, I can scan them in and send them to you. <laughs> okay, let's see. It's tiny print, I know it's hard to see. That actually is, it's actually working. Um, great. So that's what our next door neighbor would see. All right, and so then yeah. this is um, the back of the house. So there's a gate, yeah, I get a gable end. And this is the addition and the new deck from yeah. the back side. All right, so a shed roof coming off for the addition. And if you <laughs> can I move that picture a little bit, I guess to my right, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thank okay. you for yeah, picking that up. It's just helpful to, um, to see the elevations as well. Um, Jerry, can you remind me what's the height limitation on? It, do we even have one since it's connected? It's part of the home. It's not a separate garage. No, it's not separate. The height limitations are 35. And I can attest to what he said about his driveway. I pulled up in there today and backed all the way down. <laughs> all right. Yeah, it's not. And if you, if you, you know, so if you know, if you slip, if you go straight and your foot, foot gets stuck on the gas, you know where you go. Oh, you're in trouble. <laughs> There's no turn around and it, it just, we have more, we're going to widen that and, and you know, kind of double it as a little, uh, little basketball net and kind of double it as a little court for my son. And, but you know, it's, driveway is not fun. And that's, we love the look of the house up the hill, but it's, it comes with this obviously his downfall. Yeah, and extra fun with snow and ice, I'm sure. I, I snow blow it, and um, I, I'm probably the only one in the whole neighborhood that doesn't have a plow. When people ask me, I'm like, a plow would not, wouldn't make it up. And about two, years, two or three years ago, a friend of mine, you know, one morning, he just said, oh, I'm going to plow the driveway when he's sleeping. I'm, not, I'm going to tell him after six in the morning, and he slid down the bottom of the driveway and put my mailbox. So I was like, that's why I don't do it. <laughs> so Got it. Um, do, Kathy, do we have any any um, uh, butters here to comment? Anything? I don't see any, but he did submit um, letters today. Did you? Did I? Do I see these? I see the plan. I see another plan. I see. I sent them um, separately this afternoon. Okay. They didn't come in until this afternoon. I got gotcha. you. All right. Uh, there's a. See, we have comments from the CPC, Community Planning Commission, who says, um, per your request, Community Planning Commission has reviewed the above reference application, has the following comments. The application should contain more information, including an elevation drawing, agreed, to see what it looks like from the neighbors and from the street, as well as a number of stories, also agreed, for proximity to the septic system, so the proposed can be fully understood. Um, hardship. All right, that's from the CPC. Thank you. Um, and did you say there was, was there an abutter letter? Um, they were sent separate from the packet. Um, so I saw the packet that had uh, the CPC letter. Let me, let me stop sharing and see if I can find it. Mm. And then potential findings for us. Antoinette Marino. Emails from a butters. That's who it's from. I can read them to you. My maiden name, Marino. My email is still in my maiden name. Oh, Seventeen okay. years later. <laughs> well, she doesn't want everyone to know. <laughs> hey, um, uh, yeah, Kathy, if you would, I'm not seeing them in my inbox. I'm seeing the memo from the CPC draft decisions, and then the 
um, your CB filings. Okay. Um, um, when was it? When was it sent? Maybe it's. Oh, well, it maybe just a couple went. hours ago. Yeah, it was probably around two or three. I got a two o'clock and a four fifty-seven, and not seeing it in either of those two. But if you or anyone else who had it would like to read those into the into the file, that would be helpful. Thank you. I have um, from John B Y S I E Bizowitz. Uh, so funny, I was actually thinking about this yesterday and how given the ceiling height in your garage, you could add a third bay and put a lift in so you could fit two cars in the new bay. So he seems to be in favor. Um, Carol Covell, uh, thank you, Antoinette Belayas. No, let me know if you need anything else from us, Carol. So Antoinette, uh, sent a letter to the neighbors telling them what they were doing. And this was their responses. Um, M. de Plazi, uh, good luck and you'll have no issues as long as there's no opposition. A letter, a letter or someone in attendance and support would be helpful. I assume your closest neighbor on the side with the garage would be the Peabody's. Um, Barbara H. Thorstad, I hope it all works out. These houses should have had three bays. <laughs> That's the last one. All right. Um, well, it's a very small two bay, actually. It's not even a, it's it was built in 99 when everyone, I think, had a Camry or an Altima in the garage. And now we have two SUVs, and it's even without anything else in it, like we can barely open the door. <laughs> The design of it, we all know when they build a house on speculation, it's the uh, it was twenty. It's a twenty-two foot wide currently garage, and I think um, they don't even build them anymore under twenty-four wide. So. And, yep, understood. It's yeah, amazing how much you can fill those up so quickly with mm. a couple of kids and their gear. <laughs> uh, all right. That being said. Um, I think we would ask that you send in a copy of the elevation so we can include those in, in the, in your file and any other comments, Frank, comments, questions on this one? No, I think I'm good. Ben? No, no questions. Pretty no, straightforward. Sure. All right, I, I think it looks good. I like the, I think the elevations look nice. Um, apparently uh, no neighbors are against this and you have some neighbors in favor, uh, which is wonderful. So I would like to close the public hearing. Um, ben, would you like to make a motion on this one? Yeah, if I had the paperwork out. Kathy, can you put that back up? Um, the hearing notice? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's here. Oh, share it. I'm sorry. I stopped sharing. I switched computers, so all my stuff is on my other one. Oh. Um, Madam Chair, I, I move uh, favorable action on the petition of Brian E. Scott, Two Tower Box Lane, North Reading, uh, Mass, Map 74, Parcel 102 for variance from the rear setback for a third bay to the existing two car garage, according to the requirements outlined in the dimensions and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. Is, um, and before we second that, I'd like to put, just add the, the square or the footage. I think um, I'm trying to pull, find my plan again, where we're looking for eight feet from the rear lot line. I think it's actually seven, but I gave it eight just for. Just in case you, when you're call you from out there and they, <laughs> if the actual on the ground is a couple inches off, you won't be in violation. Uh, so I'd like to add to that motion, eight feet from the rear lot line in accordance with the plan submitted and the elevations, which we saw and to be submitted to the file. Um, 
and adding that it is a one story addition. I'll second that as amended. Right. All in favor, Frank? Aye. Vincent? Aye. Jennifer, aye. All right. So congratulations on that. We will um, sign up the decision. It'll go to the town clerk after we sign it. And then there's a 20 day appeal period. Great. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you very much. much. Absolutely. All right. Next on yeah. our agenda. We can sign out, right? 71 Main Street. Oh, we're good, right? You guys are done. Right. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Happy Thanks. Thanks. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Let's see if I can find this. All right. So public hearing, um, a virtual public hearing will be held on Thursday, November 18th, 2021 at 7 p.m. on the petition of Michael Hirschberg. Representative for Volta Inc., who are seeking to appeal the building commissioner's decision and a request and request a variance to install two new electric vehicle charging stations, each having a scrolling signage on them in the parking area of the existing stop and shop at 271 Main Street, North Reading, MA 01864, map 13, parcel 14, according to the North Reading Zoning Bylaws, section 200-80A prohibited signs. All right, Mr. Hirschberg. Excellent. All right, your turn. Would you tell us what you're, what you're planning to do and what these things might look like? Absolutely. Um, honorable members of the board, thank you so much for hearing the matter this, this evening. And I also want to just thank both Jerry um, and Danielle for working with us closely on these applications. Um, to get us here tonight before the ZBA. Um, so to really get to the matter of what we're, we're working with, um, you can see the L2 stations there. Um, more or less, these are very sleek um, media displayed media stations. Um, to give you a little bit of background on Volta, we're an electric vehicle infrastructure company that utilizes sponsorship to fund installation and maintenance of our stations. Um, so in that regard, there's no cost passed down to the driver. So we work to try to serve a public benefit um, by installing electric vehicle chargers, um, as of course, you know, everything is evolving with um, infrastructure and EV adoption continues to grow. Most drivers um, charge their vehicles at home um, and then go off um, where they may grab a bit of charge at grocery stores or visiting malls, et cetera, um, to avoid running out of juice. Um, so what we're seeking to do um, is to install these two media stations at the stop and shop on Main Street. Um, and they are to be placed close to um, the front of the store um, in order to display our, our stations as close to um, the entranceway to the store to avoid being anywhere near the public rights of way. Each station is about 200 feet away from the public rights of way. Um, and so on August 16th, um, we were denied our application. Um, so tonight we are here um, to appeal that uh, because we believe our installation falls within the purpose and intent of the zoning bylaws, um, referring specifically to 200-76 of the town's bylaws. Um, we believe these, in, this installation would promote the general welfare of the community, protect public health and safety and welfare, reduce traffic hazards. Um, the stations serve a public interest because they are um, providing electric vehicle charging without charging a driver. Um, any cost at all to charge their vehicles because we are um, ultimately providing that uh, using sponsorship in order to fund all of that charging. Um, ultimately, the stations are aesthetically pleasing. Um, I can certainly, um, Kathy, I, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind, I can share my screen and I can show you some installations sure. that are already established, if that's okay. Yep. Go ahead. Thank you. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Um, so this is a station installation in Walpole, uh, recently complete. Um, so this is from about, probably about 15, 20 feet away. I'm taking this image here. Um, so as you can see, the further you get away, the smaller the signage gets. Um, get smaller. 
get smaller. <laughs> um, so you kind of get the picture. Um, I'll go a little bit closer to public right of way so you can really, yeah. So this was just about on the street, on, um, forget the name of the road, but out in Walpole. So you can hardly see the stations there. We're really trying to attract the interest of persons walking in and out of stop and shop um, through the media signage and not trying to capture um, any you know, potential drivers, creating a distraction. Um, of course, any vehicle that is traveling in front of stop and shop would be operating at a low speed. Our uh, stations off also operate with ambient lighting in order to avoid creating a distraction. Um, and you can see also just from the installation here, you can see that you know we did a concrete pad. I'll zoom in a little. Um, and really just try to make them look as sleek as we could. Um, this person parked on the wrong side, but you kind of get the idea that the cord can also reach out um, and we place bollards around them in order to protect them also given um, the snow that can come up in the winter time. Um, so truly, I guess, with our appeal portion of this, um, we are really seeking uh, to say that we're really operating within the spirit of code um, and then uh, really to seek a variance, obviously, under Chapter 40A of Massachusetts General Laws and under the, the bylaws of the Zoning uh, Board. Um, we believe that the literal, literal enforcement of, um, no, just a moment, literal enforcement of 200-80 really creates a substantial hardship for Volta because um, we would be prohibited from using our business model in the Highway Business District. Uh, which is designed to attract retailing and services um, under 200-39A, 1A of the zoning bylaws. Um, we're operating as a service. Volta's purpose is to provide EV drivers with a public benefit uh, without incurring a financial detriment. Um, Volta offsets a lot of its costs, um, a lot of the kind of the detail I've already provided. Um, and really, we believe that the relief sought doesn't create a substantial detriment to the public good or otherwise intent of the bylaw because such messaging um, creates a public benefit by providing uh, messages from promoting local business to displaying emergency information. Um, and truly, I mean, we our, our electronic messaging boards change every eight seconds, and that eight seconds is based on a recommendation from the five, uh, Federal Highway Administration as far as determining um, what would create a distraction. Um, there is also, I should note, uh, no motion implied with the stations. Um, the stations just change every eight seconds um, with a flip, um, but it's like a quick, mo not, not meant to imply motion, but rather just a quick change. Um, and so ultimately we believe um, that we're acting within the spirit of the bylaws. Um, the signage is, is really only viewable from within the property itself um, as we are about 200 feet away, and as shown through a lot of the images I also presented um, to, to really try to um, just attract the attention of people that are already present on the property. Um, the property itself is also, of course, artificial topography um, because it's you know a unique quality to the area as a parking lot. Um, so for a lot of this new infrastructure that's coming in with media station um, electric vehicle chargers, um, we believe that this is a unique quality to have in a parking lot. Um, and it just also will attract more people to visit North Reading and to do their stop and do their shopping at Stop and Shop um, in the Atlantic Plaza. Um, so I will stop there <laughs> as I kind of ramble out a lot um, and just look for any questions or, or answer any questions. Yeah, I, um, one of my first questions is, do we even have the, do we have the authority to grant a variance for this? Because 280 says that um, this large category of signage is expressly prohibited. And there in 80 in 200 81. There is certain signs that may be permitted in the business and industrial districts provided a permits provided from the building inspector. And I know this is, it's, um, 
this is sort of a new technology and it's not something that would have been considered or at the time the, the code was written. Of course. Um, it's evolving. There were not electric vehicles when this was. <laughs> yes. Was uh, drafted, but I'm just, before we get too far down the, the road on kind of the details of the plan, I just want to make sure that you're, we're in the right place and that um, we have the authority to do this. See, applications for special permits. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you yet. I just need to go through the bylaws for a second here. Sure. Uh, I thought CPC had oversight for signage um, permits. And I would hate you'd be wasting your time here if we can't, if we don't have the authority to. Yeah, certainly. I, I appreciate it. Again, let's see. Can I ask a question, Madam Chair, while you're looking? Please do. Michael, um, I'm very familiar with um, Reading Electric and yes. because this is part of a monopolistic territory of theirs. Um, have you coordinated with them th this idea and, and you know, whether or not, like, you know, they're, they know about the load, potential load addition in that area? Yes. Um, so we typically actually don't coordinate with utilities on these particular projects. And the reason why is we're going to be using the existing service that Stop and Shop already has. Um, so we'd be tapping on to an existing, an existing panel that we've already provided, performed a load study on um, just to ensure that the load would suffice. Um, these are at a much lower um, voltage. They're at about 120 volts. Um, so typically, it, it's not enough power that we would need to bring in a new service. Um, Is this a level the, one or a level two? Level two. Um, and the rate from from the uh, Reading is the same as, for instance, what anyone in the plaza would be paying. Correct. Yes, sir. So the store closes at 10, maybe 11. Would you, mm -hmm. would this be available 24, seven? Um, technically, yes, but we can also, um, in the past, we've worked with different municipalities if there are specific regulations already in place um, to turn off the stations um, outside of store hours. And when the station is off, is the, the advertising still on? No, the station goes black. And I think um, under 281B, shopping and business centers. So any number of businesses greater than one that share the same lot for common points of ingress or egress and, and or common parking facilities, such centers shall be bound by the following restrictions on signage. And then a master first requirement is a master signage plan um, for any center which the business owners proposes to erect one or more signs requiring a permit, property owner must submit a special permit to the CPC, a master signage plan specifying the standards for consistency among all signs, 
and containing the following, blah, 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 blah. Um, so, um, Jerry, just sort of some input from you on uh, how these are done historically. I know, for example, when the plaza wanted to amend their, their signage up front um, that went through the CPC, we, we commented on it um, in terms of the, the additional size that was requested by the, uh, the plaza owner for, that, for the signage up front, um, but it was a CPC jurisdiction um not i mean not that i want i don't want to cede authority or responsibility if it's ours i just want to make sure that it is and i'm not certain that it is because um, the ones i've seen in the past haven't um haven't come to us jerry do you have some no, the only input I have is is I went by the 200-80, and I also uh, uh, were prohibited signage, and I also spoke with one of the C CPC members that said uh, uh, they thought that they had an oversight on their part. So, I'm sorry that they thought they had oversight. They thought they they thought they may have had, had an oversight. I'm not sure I'm following you. They thought they may have had an oversight with um, relative to the signage. They didn't realize it was scrolling. Oh, did CPC approve this? CPC gave them uh, will give them an approval, but the their own the issue is is the scrolling signage, which is signage. Um, it does move every eight to ten seconds. So, it, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, this is this is scrolling. Uh, it, it is prohibited. Mm -hmm. um, and I think CPC gave their, they may have given a, Kathy, did they give a? Did they give a letter? Their, yeah, did they give what they, what, what yeah. they? They did and I. They're on it. Michael, were you in front of the CPC? <laughs> <laughs> I only uh, corresponded with the CPC via email, um, so I did not go before then. Okay. Um, but I did work somewhat with Danielle McKnight. Okay, who's, right. who's the planning? Um, Michael, are you going before then? Um, I we have not filed to do so. Oh, okay, so they submitted a um, memo. If you want to, I can read it. Sure. For your request, the Community Planning Commission has reviewed the above reference application and offers the following comment. The CPC supports the, de the decision of the building inspector. Thank you for allowing us to the opportunity to comment. So, all right, well, um, putting jurisdiction aside for just a moment, because it sounds like, well, maybe we shouldn't. It sounds like, um, I think you're going to need to go to them. Um, okay. And what I would suggest, um, because I, I, I mean, see the moving flashing signs are, are just outright prohibited. So that gives so, one of those sort of um, interesting. So is CP, did CPC, accede to Jerry's denial and are they just going to say the same because Jerry denied it because he he sees it as scrolling so CPC sees it when they say we support the building inspector's mm -hmm. decision is it isn't that in other words is will they just say we're already more or less mm -hmm. A seated, uh, so yeah, even if you did go to CPC, have they already signed? Like, I mean, they, they, they've definitely put out a, a, a viewpoint on it, 
but even if it went to them, I'm not sure they have the authority either to approve it because it falls within the section of prohibited signage. So it's not something that could be allowed by a special permit or um, I mean, I, as the way I'm reading this is that you know, we have several categories of signs, signs which were allowed, signs which require a special permit, and then this whole section of signs which are not allowed. And it seems like um, neither board should be able to grant permission for something which is explicitly a prohibited sign, um, but if it were a sign that fell within the allowed types of signs, then the board who would be addressing that would be CPC, um, which is, I, mean, I think that it's, what I would suggest is because um, I, I don't want to, I'm not comfortable just saying no, because I'm not, I'm not certain on this yet. Um, but what I would like to do is if it was acceptable to the, to the applicant is perhaps um, extend this one to next hearing to give us a, a chance to confirm. I don't want to just say this is this is a denial if there's if if we're if I'm misunderstanding this, but I'm right now I'm not seeing how how either board really has the authority to approve this, and which seems odd. Yeah, that's that's not a problem. We'd be happy to to wait to the next hearing, um, just to allow the board to have enough time to to consider whether they have jurisdiction. Yeah, is the petition just going to be burdened by? the term expressly prohibited, you know, to me, that seems to be, I'm not too sure CPC is going to be able to move off of that either. And I'm not looking to prolong this because it, it just, this is falling into that area of statutory law that didn't anticipate innovation, if you will. And yeah, I Bob, I think that might be the, the issue that it's it's something which the current bylaws expressly prohibit. Um, so I'm not, I'm just thinking like the only, the thing that I'm thinking of that's a little bit similar um, and I'm not sure how that get, gets permitted in this much smaller scale is at um, the 7-Eleven gas station on the Gas TV. On the gas thing, they've got that little, uh, you know, yes. like the size of a, of a small laptop or smaller, just scrolling um, advertisement that kind of tells you to come in and buy your coffee or whatever they're doing. So I'm not sure how that um, was permitted. I mean, it's sort of this on a much smaller scale. Jerry, do you have any sense on how um, gas stations are allowed to have the little info info screens? I wish I could tell you yes on that, but I do. <laughs> okay, the, um, fair enough. Um, Yeah, so Michael, I'm, I'm a little conflicted here because I understand it's this is new technology and we're trying to, um, yeah. trying to provide a, a service here. Absolutely. Um, Michael, in your past um, applications to other towns for setups similar to this, have you run into the same kind of question, which is dated bylaws, which yes, won't really and if anything, maybe you could just make note of those to us so that we can possibly compare and consult if that might be a consideration for Certainly. this petition. Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Breen. Um, so, I mean, what we've been running into, I guess, 
Um, for the most part is, I mean, we'll do a number of different um, solutions. I mean, we've done text amendments as well, where we've, you know, created, you know, a new ordinance for a town. Um, and then it goes before the planning or before, wait, yeah, went before the zoning board um, for a vote to see if they would adopt it. Um, we've done, um, you know, for the most part, I mean, I myself, although I'm not representing Volta as counsel, I am also an attorney. And so I've kind of gone into a lot of these ordinances myself um, and picked apart, I guess, kind of the different definitions of a sign. I know with North Reading, it's pretty succinct about just kind of how it attracts the eye and it doesn't really distinguish between public and private property. Um, so I know that it's very much um, in North Reading kind of cut and dry, but obviously, you know, what we try to at least consider is to just sort of broaden the scope on, you know, on what a sign is, just, you know, really try to relay back to different towns that we provide an essential service. I mean, sorry, we our essential purpose is to provide electric vehicle charging. We just do that with a media station sign that then pays for the bills. And your the the unit that you have, um, are they all, is this the standard sort of shape, size, height? Yes, there? this is the one size we use. Um, and so it's 55 inch media screen. So it's about like a 55 inch TV turned vertically. Um, and then they stand about seven feet tall. Okay. And um, what sort of content is the? So we partner with, um, obviously with Stop and Shop. And so they'll display a number of ads, you know, from Smart Water to different things that have appeared in the past. Um, and then we also have um, at different towns, depending on the regulations, um, we've put up, for example, we have a station in Wakefield um, and we've done Sabatino's insurance. Um, we've done um, another, uh, I forget the name, but, but it was a some form of like an air conditioning company um, that's local. So we've done a number of different, um, more or less promoting local business. Um, and it's basically anyone that wants to buy ad space, but of course we're also on Stop and Shop's property. So anything that we're gonna do is gonna be very um, in, in good taste, right? Of course, we, we wouldn't wanna display content that would be um, considered malice or, or just uh, malicious content in what, any way whatsoever. So do they have oversight or any sort of consent to content? Um, I believe they do, um, in some regard, um, have, I mean, I'm pretty certain that they do. I, I can't completely comment on hand from what I've seen. I believe so. Is there an audio com uh, component? Sound? No, no audio. Okay, it's all visual. Okay. okay thanks, Bob. That's a great, good point. And uh, did any of the... Uh, towns or authorizing municipalities retain any uh, control over the uh, content? Um, so, um, that, no, they did not. I mean, we could certainly, I mean, what we've done in the past two for other towns is, um, I remember one town, this is an example, and I don't believe it was in Massachusetts, but it um, was some other town, I believe New York. They wanted to display the like the little league schedule. That's another thing that we can do. Um, or like emergency messages, you know, obviously through COVID, um, I know a lot of our California stations were displaying just kind of like a number of, you know, you know, especially at the beginning of COVID of, you know, hand sanitizer and all of this is available in store kind of thing and making sure that people were kind of aware of what was going on, numbers of cases that were rising, et cetera. Um, in natural disasters, we've also had stations available as well that will display messages for the public. Um, so certainly there's you know the pub, the municipality can tap in um but as far as regulating speech too i mean certainly there's first amendment um considerations that are taken into account so, so i guess at, in the point we are tonight we just have to really decide if if the bylaws are just too i, I think we it might be best if we do continue it in and try to um, figure this out. To me, that seems the more practical course in the immediate. Right, yeah. So we're not taking up your time tonight. Let us. Um, I'll take a take a look back at this and give a little thought, and then we can reconvene 
Kathy, when are we back? Is it December what? By the way, Michael, do you have a timeline on this? December 9th is when we continue to. Go ahead, December 9th. Um, Mr. Breen, uh, we don't have like a specific timeline in place. Obviously, we want to work with the town closely, give, you, uh, give everyone a chance to kind of make sure that the town has the authorization to move forward. Um, so certainly, I mean, I mean, I guess in one respect, you know, as soon as possible, but at the same time, we also understand that you know, this is very new and we want to make sure that we give the town the, the opportunity to really understand um, whether they have authority here. Great. So um, if I might ask you to request a continuance until December 9th, then we'd be happy to continue this. Excellent. Um, yes, yeah, so the applicant wishes to request um, a continuance here. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for doing that. And then, um, so we will see you on the 9th and uh, revisit this and hopefully have a definitive answer on at least whether or not we can go forward or if this is going to require a revision to the town bylaws for it to be considered or if you should be in front of our friends over at CPC. Wonderful. I appreciate the board's time and, and thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Absolutely. Yes, you as thank well. You. Thank you. All right, board, I think we just have some minutes to approve, which look good to me. Anyone else have a, any comments or comments? Oh, do, uh, do we have to continue the 33 in Anthony Road since the oh, applicant yes, I didn't appear? I think you're right. That makes sense. Or do we, you know, um, Kathy, did I understand from your message today that um, you out, you reached out, but there wasn't any so um, we they didn't get their abutter notice okay. in time, so they couldn't notify their abutters. So I told them you'd have to be on the next meeting, but they were advertised in the newspaper. Okay. So if you just want to continue with that, fine. I take a motion to um, move the um, formally uh, continue the 33 Anthony Road variance request to um, our meeting of December 9th. Second. All in favor? Aubrey and I. And we go GI. All right, All right I'll, I'll third it. Me too, <laughs> Jennifer. Um, and anyone's welcome to. Um, great. So I think it's just meeting minutes. Look good to me. I'd like to make a motion to approve them, unless anyone else had any comments or, or edits to the minutes. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Bob. Aubrey and I. And Raguchi, I. Jennifer, I. All right. Um, we have been requested by um, our local broadcast, who is it, to, to run these meetings um, either live <laughs> or, or um, video tapes of them after um, local public access. <laughs> How do my <laughs> members feel about this opportunity to be just, just that famous? A more practical question is, is it ever gonna go back into town hall? Is there any, um, any need thought for that either? I haven't heard anything. Kathy, have you? I have But um, I think it was extended until April, and mm -hmm. unless the governor decided to change that. No, that's I think that's. will eventually make it public hearings in person, is what I was told. And the TA is also advocating Zoom meetings as well. Um, because the uptick in COVID. Uh -huh. no, it's, it's definitely very, I think, convenient for applicants and their council to be able to just pop in by Zoom. It's, it's you know, we miss being able to see people live and have that little bit of, of interaction. 
Um, I know the prior board was not um, interested in having live, have, um, have the live meetings taped live. I know these are being recorded and I think, Kathy, are they already put up on, on YouTube or on? Um, um, I think I have to share, allow them to have it. So I, has, I did give him the last one, but. Yeah, they, it, I mean, it is a public live. record. Yeah. It's on CNN. Well, of Yes. Not opposed no. to it. It's just I, I, I. The only question I had is if we were in person meetings, if we were actually live, you would have people that would be able to suddenly take to the mic and offer a thought from the general public. Maybe, you know, at least try to. So. If the, oh, the. I mean, if it's live, I don't think. I don't think right. it'll be interactive. It's just posted. So if oh. you're at home, you can watch us on local cable access channel, whatever we are. And the good news is nobody will do that, I don't think. You'd Unless be surprised watch. how many people don't have a life. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised about that, but uh, I can't even imagine watching one of these if I didn't like understand what was going on. Uh, I mean, there's there's got to be better. I mean, I know sometimes you look through all the cable channels and you're like, there's nothing. Why is there nothing I want to watch? <laughs> well, I'm going to watch this still movie. Not, uh, this I have to not admit, coming. I don't even know where it is on the on my <laughs> fios <laughs> viewing channels i have no idea um we become local celebrities I, <laughs> i'm sure that will be it and if we if we ever get um elm street that elm street the 40b project back up that sort of thing might get some attention um yeah. the three car garage variants is can't imagine it's gonna or, or, we're gonna get for that or more chickens <laughs> more ch chickens we haven't had a goat in a long time i don't know what happened to goats we had goats for a couple of years goats were big um so but it, it, all i will say is even even today Anything we say on these meetings, it, it is being recorded and it is a public record. So to the extent anyone ever wants to go back, if they're challenging one of our decisions, this is all mm -hmm. available. You no, know, you know, that last that last piece that we had from Volta is an interesting one because it's it's almost like it's a billboard and it's um, it's a charger. The charging, you'd have to plug that in for two days to charge your car full. Mm -hmm. um, based based on what it's charging at, so um, it it it's just interesting how it it's really more of an advertising play, which is how they're making money on it. Mm -hmm. So, is someone going to leave their car out there like for two days in a parking lot? Some, uh, so yeah. some of my clients have put them like Littleton's a good example. Uh, they were offering free charging in front of their um, Littleton Electric site. And they realized it was the same people and, you know, like another guy with the Tesla, you know, of course they need to charge for free, right? They, they would drop off one guy's Tesla, the other one in the Tesla would drive him home. And then when he was full, but they were, they were fast charged. So when they were full, the other one would go back and fill for free. And the, you know, they drive for days and that was their, their thing until they started charging them the going rate. And then, you know, they weren't happy when they got their bill. Interesting. So, so but, it, but it is something that, you know, uh, Jerry's talked about it. Bob, you talked about it and looking at a lot of the, the stuff that's on, you know, the town record that, you know, maybe should be looked at for things, you know, new technologies, because there are going to be a lot of, you know, I, I don't know whether it's even straightforward to put in some of these, these other charging stations and where they get located and you know how far they need to be away from um you know there's some charging stations now that have storage in them so they have battery storage you know which is at, at times could be dangerous um but there's in in a lot of places that's how they're popping up everywhere is that there's no regulations for them mm -hmm. no, and that's um and i think this is a really interesting conversation. I want to be careful since we are not in the public hearing, we may have to save this till 
December to have some of this this discussion. But um, the point about charging is it how much charging is actually being provided to right. someone versus is this really just a, a billboard? Which um, from my review so far, please everyone take a look. I'm not sure that there's the authority for either the CPC or ourselves to, to grant that. But it did make me think, Jerry, there's that flashing sign up by the um, motorcycle tuning place. Is that <laughs> um, right up on Main Street past wherever they... Um, I haven't noticed was. that flashing sign. You need to point, somebody needs to point that out. I'd be more than happy to tell them that you can't have that Is flashing. It, I thought it was flashing. Maybe it was just... Right. Am I, I have not seen a flashing sign yet. It, I think that what catches your eye for that is that it's um, it may it kind of has that standalone look to it. In other words, they have their uh, how did the bylaws refer to it as the um, the master sign that's mm -hmm. on the building? Then they might have an individual. They might have they might have put up an individual electric sign to just kind of. Uh, you know, akin to, um, you know, free oil change, like that kind of thing. And it, it, but I think it's bright and I don't think it flashes, but I do believe it, it, it is maybe just, it's just because it's a new sign mm -hmm. that wasn't, that hasn't been there historically. So now it catches my eye every time I, I drive up. Well, what's interesting street. about that is that that might not comply under the. Well, that was my question. And <laughs> when I was reading through the bylaws, it's like, wait a minute, where'd that sign come from? So, yeah, I don't recall seeing a flashing sign here. If I did see one, it wouldn't be up there. All right, that Jerry, I noticed some prog some progress on the uh, on the other Main Street location. Yeah, that again, I didn't. Uh, you, you broke up. I, the former I said U Hall I, location is is seen yeah. to have um, had some physical changes to it. If you drive by it, um, everybody has moved. Up. Oh. I think they're back on the agenda. Yeah, it, December it, it appears well. that the service station has moved out. The U-Haul interest is no longer there, and um, the lot is 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 you know nine tenths empty of what it used to be. But, I mean, it's 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 notable in that regard. But I That's again, great. I think they're they're coming back before us. So again, I think it's the public hearing. As far as I think we should just draw this back to um, the question of. I have no problem with the public broadcasting. I oh mean, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I, I think that, you know, all things being said, you yeah. know, I think and what's interesting is, is that for any of these conversations, the idea that it, it might alert people that the bylaws are a little dated so that if, you know, when it will come eventually and it will come time to do them, uh, the public record will be all the more um, established from, just availability of, of the meetings to whoever wants to watch it. I just think the pub, as the, if it's gonna be a live broadcast, it just has to be understood that it is to the, not so much to us, but to the, each of the um, applicants and or anybody giving statement, just so they know that it's, you know, no, whatever they say is gonna show to up on TV. The, um, you have to acknowledge that it's being recorded when you sign into this mm -hmm. meeting. I agree. I, I, I think it's if, if that's what they want, um, there's no reason why it shouldn't. You know, I think more input is always better than less input. You know, I think the previous <laughs> the history of this board has a lot of secrecy behind it, I think. And um, I think having more openness will be appreciated. And like you said, I, I agree. I, I think there are some things that if we say they seem dated, um, that we may get some people in the public that say, or you know, for that matter, maybe even some of the select board members that jump on and agree that something should be changed. All right. I'm fine with that too. I, I don't have any preference either way, honestly. It's fine. I don't, I don't think it's tough. Frank? I no totally. I you know I haven't been on the board. I feel long enough to have a decision. You know, have a preference either way. But 
I can tell you growing up, I used to watch the uh, Town of Plymouth community oh, stuff because my father watches it still to this day. <laughs> so that's why you're doing this now. Well, that's what, yeah, that's what got me kind of interested in it, right? So, um, no, I, mean, I think it's fine. So you will all be local celebrities now when you show up at wherever, wherever in town. You're going to get stopped at Stop and Shop. And exactly. You'll be asked you? for, I'm sure, autographs, <laughs> pictures, selfies, the whole thing. Excuse so me, Maria, can I have your autograph? Because <laughs> all the family <laughs> taking the call hiding. off county by county. <laughs> <laughs> they might come up and ask us questions if anybody actually watches it. Um, it's kind of funny. Any other uh, news or info for the board? I don't think so. Nope. We got 12 ready? minutes to kick off. I know. So I want to let everyone go. I've been, I've been waving to all the uh, college, post college kids who have been coming through my four year on the way to watch the game. So we're, we're going to have a crowd here. It's going to be good. Um, hope everyone has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Get some, get some time off. Oh yeah. It sounds like it's, it, they're pre-gaming. I, I can hear them. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Guys, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everyone. Thanksgiving. Yeah, have a great one. All. Best of all, thanks. <laughs>